Hey guys, Ivan here. So, 2022 Mr. Olympia. What a show. Can we pause for a moment and appreciate the quality of the lineup that we had this year? There was a lot of hype about 2022 Mr. Olympia and I gotta say, it lived up to its hype and it was so competitive, it was so crazy. What a show, man, what a show. In the last 20 years, I don't think we had such a competitive lineup and the results were somewhat surprising. A lot of things did not play out the way we expected them to. So I decided to make this video about the biggest surprises of this show. This is basically gonna be part two of the series I started yesterday. The first video was the biggest disappointments and this one is about the biggest surprises. And I'd like to start this video with this little clip from the awards. It was such a suspense moment. Look at Derek's face and then look at Hadi's face. These guys looked like they were on the edge of a heart attack, how, how tense they were and Bob Giacarillo was prolonging this as much as he could. So at the end when Hadi heard his name, he fell down on his knees. It was such an emotional moment and it was a historic moment. 17th Mr. Olympia in the history of bodybuilding from Iran. Check this out guys. And new Olympia champion! I can't imagine what he felt like. After so much struggle, he became the best bodybuilder in the world. And this wasn't much of a surprise. Some people think that he was supposed to win last year. As you can see, Big Ramy was the first to approach him, to congratulate him. And I feel so sorry for criticizing Big Ramy heavily these past couple of days. But it is what it is. I mean, he didn't deserve to be the winner again. And this was not his best version. And I think this is the end of Big Ramy. What a humble Mr. Olympia, guys. I mean, Big Ramy was such a gentleman. But I'm pretty sure his era is over. I'm pretty sure Big Ramy is done. His physique was not what it once was. I think this photo describes the best what happened in one photo it's a high quality photo it has been taken from up close you can see that his legs are deformed they were also a little bit down in size i think and there were those bumps and dents everywhere basically in his legs in his glutes you can see that here his abs were washed out his lats were down in size his triceps and his arms were melted his calves and his forearms too and no i did not forget what this video is supposed to be about it's about the biggest surprises and this is by far the biggest surprise of 2022 mr olympia everybody and their mother in their predictions had big Remy winning this year's mr olympia they were so certain about him everybody thought he was gonna be an easy winner because it seemed like his conditioning was the best that it ever was and it may have been at this stage but nobody thought he was gonna atrophy this much i don't know why this happened i can't wait to hear dennis james and chad nichols to explain what the hell happened where are big Ramy's lats where are his triceps gone what happened in only one year guys one year and the thing is, they were saying that he was training the entire year and that he's bigger this year. That he's the biggest he has ever been. He was lighter last year. So something must have happened. And I don't think it's an injury. Like, where did he injure himself? In his biceps? In his triceps? In his lats? Both of his lats? His forearms and his calves? And what is going on with his quads? What is happening with his glutes? Where are his abs? Like so many things are wrong about his physique and he can't be injured in every single body part. So that's not it. What it looks like to me is that he's simply old. He's getting older. That's what his physique looks like. When you get older, your limbs start to fade as it happened with his legs, calves, forearms, arms, and also his lats. Back is something that atrophies also with age, and his abs get washed out. That's also something that happens with age, which is kind of weird because of two things. First of all, he's only 38. There are so many other bodybuilders that look great at 38, but then again, people age differently. The other thing that is weird is that last year, he looked so fresh. How much could have he aged in one year? I know he married another wife and that must have added to his stress levels, but to stress him out that much that he ages like five years in one year, I don't know, it was weird. 
whatever happened i was so surprised with this i did not expect big remy to go down to fifth maybe some of you guys remember but in my first prediction that i made on my community page i said big remy was gonna be fourth but i thought he was gonna be fourth because he was not gonna be conditioned i definitely did not expect this nobody did but in my final prediction video i had big remy in second i didn't expect him to win but i thought he has a good chance of winning however him ending up all the way down to fifth was a big surprise to me and i'm sure it was to most of you the next thing that really caught me by surprise was Derek Lansford almost winning the freaking Mr. Olympia, ending up in second, beating everybody, destroying the lineup, destroying Nick Walker, Brandon Curry, Big Remy, everybody else. I was so surprised with this. In my prediction video, I had him in 10th place. And that was a huge, huge mistake. I just didn't know what to expect. But as you can see in this comparison right here, he looks much better now than he looked last year in 212. First of all, he didn't have to suffer down to make the 212 weight. Also, Hani Rambo talked about this. They didn't really go for crazy conditioning. They went for a little bit more fullness with decent conditioning and it played out really well. Another thing is he had an entire year to train and to improve on his physique, which he absolutely did. As you can see, his lats were bigger, his biceps especially were bigger. And that was like the biggest critique that he received last year. He needed bigger biceps, bigger bicep peaks, and his arms were definitely bigger. That front double was insane. The thing that I would like to see him improve a little bit more is his legs. If he gets those legs bigger, if he grows overall a little bit more, I think he can beat Hadi. I think Derek Lansford is the future Mr. Olympia. I think he has all the tools necessary for that. He has perfect shape, basically. His structure, his shape is better than Hadi's. I mean, Hadi, he has a little bit blockier waist, but his legs are that much bigger and his shoulders are super wide. And yeah, about Hadi's shoulders, nobody talked about uh, Sintel, you know? His former manager, that guy, Parsav, whatever, uh, posted so much stuff about Hadi putting oil in his delts and his arms. And I thought that was gonna affect the judging. I thought it was gonna be visible on stage, but it wasn't, you know, it looked decent. So nobody's talking about that. And I want to start, uh, I want to say, because Hadi has a little bit worse shape, and Derek has basically the perfect shape, perfect silhouette, perfect structure, I think he has the potential to beat Hadi as long as he improves on muscularity, he needs to be a little bit bigger, maybe improve conditioning if possible, if it's not gonna affect his fullness, but that's about it, if his legs are a little bit bigger and he just adds more maturity over the years, I can see him becoming the Mr. Olympia in the Open next year, easily. And I think IFBB wants him to be the champion. I think they are waiting for him. This year it was quite apparent that Hadi was better. And that's why they gave it to him. It was the right choice. But they are waiting for Derek. They want to give it to him as soon as he deserves it. Because he would be the perfect ambassador for bodybuilding. For Mr. Olympia. For IFBB. Anyways, this caught me off guard. This was a huge surprise for me. I did not predict this. I didn't know what to expect of Derek. I shouldn't have doubted him and Honey Rambert. It's a lesson for me this year. So next year, I have big hopes, big expectations of this guy. I'm expecting him to improve and to win the Mr. Olympia. All right, next, let's check out the official list and the scoring of the Mr. Olympia Open Division. As you can see, I highlighted some of the most notable results. For example, William Bonek ending up in 9th, all the way down in 9th. Ian Valier ending up in 11th out of top 10, Nick Walker 3rd, Michael Crisio 12th, Hunter Labrada 7th, that was a little bit surprising, and Rafael Brandau 10th, but the biggest surprises of this scorecard are on the second page, where you can see Big Ram in 5th, and Samson Dauda ending up in 6th, man, he looked great, he looked amazing, and I wouldn't say this is a big surprise, because some of us expected him to do well, in my prediction I had him in like 7th or something like that, but it is a surprise, because more people thought Andrew Jack, for example, is gonna do better than Samson, is gonna be in top 6 or something like that, but no, Andrew Jack ended up in 8th, and Hunter Labrada was 7th, so Samson placed ahead of those guys, and a lot of other guys, 
which I'm gonna talk about in a second, and I gotta say, Samson brought it, man, he was humongous, he was huge, him and Milo Šač did a great job, he was bigger than last year, fuller, his conditioning was just as good, if his conditioning was a little bit better, if he had more straighted glutes and just leaner, harder, drier glutes, he would have been higher, man, and he would have been potential even winning the Mr. Olympia, he has a lot of potential, he has the potential to win the Mr. Olympia, he's much taller than Derek Lansford and Heidi Chopin, as long as he keeps improving, as long as he comes in bigger, and he figures out the conditioning, if he comes in with shredded glutes, guys, he can win the Mr. Olympia, so even though this is not such a big surprise, at least to me, because I saw what he looked like, I expected him to do really well, I'm still pretty sure that this was a big surprise for a lot of people, because last year he was nowhere near that top 6, and I was so happy for Samson, because I'm a big fan of Fuad Abiyad's podcast, and Samson was a guest many times, so I feel like I know him personally, even though I just listened to him on a podcast a couple of times, and I think he's a great guy, and I'm really happy that he finally did it, and I think he has so much potential, also I love his physique, because it's very aesthetic, he has a small waist, no bubble gut, beautiful shape, he's a great, great poser, and also he's coached by my fellow Serbian Milo Sharchev, so I was super happy when he ended up in that top 6, and I hope he's going to get much higher than that, as I said, Big Remy is probably done, and he is the last of the Mohicans, he is the guy that competed against Phil Heath, Kai Green, even Jay Cutler, Dennis Wolf, Sean Roden, Dexter Jackson, and Big Remy was the part of that old guard, and I think this is gonna be the last year of Big Remy, maybe he's gonna come back, but I think he's gonna be in that top 5, top 6 ever again, so we got a totally new generation of bodybuilders, you can see that the entire top 5 or top 6 without Big Remy is all new guys, new guard, we have a change, big change in bodybuilding, in open bodybuilding, in top 6, and these guys right here are your 2020s era of bodybuilding. Back to the scoring card, I gotta say I was surprised with Rafael Brandao cracking the top 10, I was pretty confident that he won't do it, I thought he was much smaller, but I guess they rewarded his shape, Hunter Labrada in 7th, that wasn't much of a surprise for me, I thought he was gonna be 9th, so I mistook his placement for 2 spots, uh, Michal Krizo, this was also kind of expected, 12th place, uh, Nick Walker, in my prediction I had him winning the Mr. Olympia, that's right, but in so many videos prior to the Mr. Olympia, I said I see him in top 3, many people disagreed with me, they said he can't be in top 3 because of his shape, because of his structure, but because of his muscularity and conditioning, I thought he was gonna be certainly in top 3, I thought he was gonna win, I did not expect Derek to look this good or hardy, but top 3 was a huge success, you know, he's a young guy, I mean, last year was his first Mr. Olympia, he was 5th, now he's 3rd, so this is a huge success, however, it isn't really a surprise. William Bonek, not much of a surprise, at least to me, I did have him in my top 3 potentially, because he looked so amazing at the Arnold Classic and Boston Pro, and he did not repeat that, I thought he was gonna be just like that or better, but he didn't, and the past couple of years he hasn't really been that consistent like before, so anything could have been expected from him, so I'm not too surprised with this, William Bonek in 9th, and then we come to Ian Valier. in my prediction video, I literally gave him 11 spots, so I got him right, at least, so for me, this was not a surprise, I mean, I predicted him placing right where he did, but this guy went from 7th to 11th, and he did not really bring the best version of Ian Valier. something was wrong with him, if you take a look at this video of him posing, you can see it right there in his face, that something was off, either psychologically, or physically, it looks like he was ill, I don't know what was happening, but he didn't look well, he was shaking on that stage, he couldn't hold the pose, something was definitely wrong, and as far as his conditioning and how he peaked, you know, he could have been better, he definitely could have been better, his conditioning was okay, and his fullness was fine, but he didn't have the detail, he didn't really pop like he knows how to sometimes, he was much better if you ask me, last year in Texas Pro, and also this year in Vancouver Pro, but even if he was at his best, the best that he could have been, would have he placed higher than this? Maybe he would have edged out Rafael Brandau or even William Bonek, maybe he would have been ninth, but I don't really see him higher than that. I can't see him beating Andrew Jack, who was seventh. 
And I don't think he can beat Hunter Labrada, not anymore. Ian's structure is not really that great. He is a mass monster, he has a lot of freaky body parts, a lot of freaky poses, but he's not as complete as some of the other guys like Hunter Labrada. And this lineup was very competitive. Then again, Hunter was also not on, so if Ian was 100% on, and if he was better than Vancouver or last year's Texas, maybe, maybe he would have placed as high as 8. Do I see him beating Andrew Jacked? No way, not a chance, I don't see that. As far as him, as far as Andrew Jacked, was this a surprise? Not really, it was kind of what people expected. His back needs to be improved, his hamstrings too. If he does that, if he changes that, I can see him doing really well in the future. Classic physique results were pretty interesting, we all expected Chris to win, but we did not expect Terence to place as low as 6th, that's right, Terence Ruffin, Ruff Diesel placed 6th. What was the problem? I think it was simply conditioning, he needs to be tighter, and he also made a statement that he talked to the judges and they told him he needs to be more conditioned, and he is going to fix that next time, he did not bring good conditioning, and that was simply it. Also, a very pleasant surprise was Wesley Vissers, cracking the top 10, not just 10, but he was 8th actually. And this is one I was also very happy about, I'm sure most of you guys follow his channel, he's really big on YouTube, I used to follow him a long time ago when he was basically just a kid, before he started competing, before he turned pro, and now he's 8th in the world out of 59 freaking guys on Mr. Olympia stage, this is a huge, huge success for Wesley Vissers, and I was talking about this for years now, I always said it. As soon as he brings conditioning, finally, they will reward him for that. He did that, he came in the best conditioning we ever saw him so far, and he cracked that top 10, he ended up in 8th, big, big success for Wesley. I'm also really happy that he made it because his physique resembles that of Arnold Schwarzenegger a lot. So I'm happy the judges really rewarded the golden era type of physique. Not just the best combination of shape and conditioning and muscularity under the weight cap, but actually golden era type of lines and I'm really happy because of that. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see Logan Franklin on that stage, he made a video in which he briefly explained what happened, it was a health issue, he was feeling really sick and his body was not as responsive as usual, so he decided to pull out and not compete. Which is very unfortunate, but it is what it is. Anyways guys, that's gonna do it for this video, if I forgot some of the biggest surprises, you can tell me down below in the comment section, I hope you enjoyed this recap of 2022 Mr. Olympia, if you did, please give this video a thumbs up, and if you want to see more bodybuilding content like this, subscribe to my channel guys, thank you so much for watching, all the best and bye bye.